Inshallah, we'll wait for a moment or two as people join. Be in the Taala. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa anim wa akrim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين اللهم ارزقنا يا رب اللهم ارزقنا الخير كله نعوذ بك من الشر كله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين I know that for many this is a little bit of a time change um, from the usual time, which is 7.45 uh, EST. We're doing it slightly earlier, um, given the Ramadan uh, schedule to come, inshallah. So we decided to, um, for those who may be uh, fasting tomorrow, um, some still don't know because they haven't sighted the moon. But regardless, um, inshallah, we are going to be doing the live streams for Dhikr and Fikr on uh, Thursdays at 6 p.m. So that the evening is spent for ibadah and uh, worship and prayer, etc. And inshallah ta'ala, um, uh, throughout the nights of Ramadan, we'll have short snippets, around 10 to 15 minutes, we'll be doing... Um, from the prophetic ad'iya, we'll be doing prophetic du'a, um, spending time um, s sifting through some of the beautiful inherited supplications of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, reflecting briefly upon them and, and making du'a together insha'Allah, uh, as well as having the Saturday gathering for the uh, virtues of seclusion insha'Allah from 1 to 3. So bi ta'ala, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to... Uh, open up the doors of Ramadan to us and that we are in the best and most blessed and beautified of states Allahumma Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen So inshallah um, this is going to be a special session if you will it's uh, meant to be kind of a um, welcoming and an intro to the month of Ramadan and um, I'm calling it an Abrahamic Ramadan or the meaning of an Abrahamic Ramadan and you know, there, as in that small clip that I recorded a few days ago, um, there is so much that we can glean from those moments in the Prophet uh, Ibrahim's life when he was spending time um, with his son building the Kaaba and the commands around um, establishment and building and constructing uh, and that phase of, of being in isolation and really um, carrying on and carrying on his shoulders and the, the shoulders of that small family, carrying uh, the great responsibility, and the great amana of building uh, the prophetic mosque and the prophetic space and the prophetic home. And that is, inshallah ta'ala, um, what we want to um, analyze and, and, and consider for ourselves as we're thinking about the individual masajid that we're building in our homes and, and the spaces that we're constructing um, in our bedrooms or in our uh, uh, you know houses or apartments, you know, where what can we take from um, what lessons and what meanings can we take from the life of Sayyiduna Ibrahim to inshallah inculcate into our own realities as we are on the doorsteps of Ramadan uh, bi ta'ala. So inshallah with that I want to actually recite um, some of the verses that are revealed in this particular vein, um, and they they are replete with 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 profound meanings. And so, inshallah, I'll take a few moments to recite these verses, and then I'll translate them into English. Uh, 
So these are the verses from, from Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, Ayah 124 all the way to Ayah 132. So if you even want to follow along in a Mus'haf, you can follow along, inshallah. I'll be reciting it in Arabic and then reading the translation, inshallah. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ ابتلى إبراهيم ربه بكلمات فأتمهن قال إني جاعلك للناس إماما قال ومن ذريتي قال لا ينال عهد الظالمين وإذ جعلنا البيت مثابة للناس وأمنا واتقذوا من مقام إبراهيم مصلى وعهدنا إلى إبراهيم وإسماعيل أن طهر بيتي للطائفين والعاكفين والعاكفين والركع السجود وإذ قال إبراهيم رب اجعل هذا بلدا آمنا وارزق أهله من الثمرات من آمن منهم بالله واليوم الآخر قال ومن كفر فأمتعه قليلا ثم أضطره إلى عذاب النار وبئس المصير وإذ يرفع إبراهيم القواعد من البيت وإسماعيل ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم ربنا واجعلنا مسلمين لك ومن ذريتنا أمة مسلمة لك وأرنا مناسكنا وتب علينا وأرنا مناسكنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا وابعث فيهم رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياتك ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة ويزكيهم إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَنْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِهَ نَفْسَهُ وَلَقَدْ اصْطَفَيْنَاهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قال أسلمت لرب العالمين ووصى بها إبراهيم بنيه ويعقوب يا بني إن الله اصطفى إن الله اصطفى لكم الدين فلا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم وبه نستعين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين الله سبحانه وتعالى says starting from verse 124 of سورة البقرة when Ibrahim's Lord tested him with certain commandments, which he fulfilled, he said, I will make you a leader of people, Ibrahim asked, and will you make me leaders from my descendants too? Allah answered, my pledge does not hold for those who do evil. And I want you, my dear brothers and sisters, to put your heart in mind and your body and your entire being in the Abrahamic reality, I want you to imagine that you are of you are the one receiving those commands, and I want you to summon what you know of Sayyiduna Ibrahim and 
his own childhood and the, the list of commands and obligations and duties and realities that he had to uphold in his life. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We made the house a resort and a sanctuary for people, saying, Take the spot where Abraham stood as your place of prayer. This was the command to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Take the maqam of Ibrahim as the place of your prayer, which is so uh, poetic and beautiful in that the guidance to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was to follow, was to stand behind the maqam of Sayyidina Ibrahim and to pray that prayer and to surrender in that beautiful fashion. We commanded Ibrahim and Ismail, purify my house for those who walk around it, those who stay there, and those who bow and prostrate themselves in worship. Ibrahim said, My Lord, make this land secure and provide with produce those of its people who believe in God and in the last day. Allah said, As for those who disbelieve, I will grant them enjoyment for a short while and then subject them to the torment of the fire and evil destination. As Ibrahim and Ismail built up the foundations of the house, they prayed, O oh Allah, accept this from us. You are the all-hearing, the all-knowing. O oh Allah, make us devoted to you. Make our descendants into a community devoted to you. Show us how to worship and accept our repentance. You are the ever-relenting, the most merciful. O oh Allah, make a messenger of their own rise up from among them to recite your revelations to them. Teach them the scripture and wisdom and purify them. You are the mighty, the wise. Who but a fool would forsake the religion of Ibrahim. Subhanallah. Who but a fool, illa man safiha nafsa, would forsake the religion of Sayyiduna Ibrahim. We have chosen him in this world, and he will rank among the righteous in the afterlife. His Lord said to him, Devote yourself to me. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ Devote yourself and surrender yourself, Ibrahim, to me. And Allah and Ibrahim replied, I devote myself to the Lord of the universe. And commanded Ibrahim, he commanded his sons to do the same. As did Ya'qub, Jacob, my sons, God has chosen your religion for you. So make sure you devote yourselves to him till your dying moment. My dear brothers and sisters, I hope and pray that these verses, they come to life in our hearts in this moment. Because Sayyiduna Ibrahim, as a Hanif, as someone who was inclining towards the most pure of orientations, Musliman, someone who was always in loving surrender, someone who sought to attain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure, who went through multiple challenges in his life, and struggles and difficulties to establish this reality. Brothers and sisters, this spirit that is Im imbued in these ayat is the spirit that I hope and pray that all of us can embody as we're thinking about this coming Ramadan. You know, we're at its doorsteps. And this is a moment for all of us to think about where are we going? And what do we really want? What do we want for ourselves? What do we want for our spouses? What do we want for our children? What do we want for our community? I know that we're not content. I know that we're not content with our own individual selves. I know we're not content with the status quo that is in our homes, the culture of our homes, or the, the nature of, of how our homes are functioning. We're not content. I know we're not content with the status of our communities. You know, a lot of us, regardless of the quarantine or not, feel, feel that we don't have a community. And that's a problem. 
You know, these are, these are serious questions. And I hope and pray that we can embody an Abrahamic spirit because when you read these words, the sacred words of the Qur'an, and what Allah has preserved for us to ponder over our own ahwal, our own states, He's giving us pure guidance. He's giving us clear guidance. He's giving us exactly what we need to internalize as intentions, as spirits, as meanings, and then to be Allah Ta'ala by Allah's permission and His grace actualize them in our lives. And so Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala commanded Ibrahim Alayhi Salam to take this space to build. And I just want to share with you the moment when Sayyiduna Ibrahim went to his son Ismail to command him and to inform him of what the command was. And so this is narrated to us in a hadith in Bukhari that is on the authority of Sayyidina Ibn Abbas where Ibrahim alayhi salam he came to where Ismail was and Sayyidina Ismail he was sharpening sticks right nearby Zamzam and that is a itself subhanallah Sayyidina Ismail obviously has an intimate connection to Zamzam because he was by Zamzam when a Sayyida Hajar the mother of Ismail and the and the wife of the Sayyidina Ibrahim as she went back and forth between Safa and Marwa in that in that profound expression of commitment of willing to exhaust oneself and to work and to strive towards virtue to take care of her own son that was her mission her mission was to take care of her son that's why she was going between Safa and Marwa a very practical motherly disposition and that's the disposition that all of us as parents we have towards our children we want to take care of them we figure out how to get them groceries in this in this moment in time we figure out how to get them medical aid and attention to get them medication if they need it to make sure they're being educated say the hajar who was really you know the backbone of of the meccan story if you will because it was when sayyidina ibrahim left her there by a command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because she said to him allahu amaraka bihada that Allah command you to do this and he said no he said yes and it was painful for him but it was a part of the succession of surrender that Sayyidina Ibrahim embodied right and so Sayyidina Ismail is sitting by Zamzam because that's precisely where the water source broke as Sayyidina Hajar was going back and forth between Safa and Marwa just looking for any signs of life any signs of water any signs of food for her son who was in dire straits and so Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas is relaying this to us. And when Sayyidina Ibrahim saw Sayyidina Ismail, because by the way, Sayyidina Ibrahim, he would go, he would travel back and forth to Mecca. He didn't stay in Mecca all that time. So, you know, the story is obviously long, but he would travel back and forth. And this is one of his journeys back. And he walks into the, 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 the sanctuary where they were. And just Zemzem. And there, by the way, the Kaaba is not built at that point. The Kaaba is not built, so there's no structure. However, some of the indications is that there were markers that Allah made Sayyidina Ibrahim aware of. So he goes to him. فَقَامَ إِلَيْهِ You know, he went towards him and they stood up. فَصَنَعَا كَمَا يَصْنَعُ الْوَالِدُ بِالْوَلَدُ وَالْوَلَدُ بِالْوَالِدُ and that's a very beautiful description is that what they did was what the father does to the son and what the son does with the father which is an expression of the, that bond the, the bond between a parent and their child and so this was a moment of, of, of warmth and, and, and a welcoming quality to it this was an embrace between a parent and a child that have not seen each other so you can only imagine the, the emotions the spirit, the joy. And Sayyidina Ibrahim was an elderly man who, who did not even fathom that he would have a child, but he did. And so I just want us to put ourselves in the emotional space because so often when we read the stories of our prophets, we act as if they are disconnected realities from us, that somehow that emotional state is not present. No, it was a very emotional reality for them. And we see this in the same exact emotional 
state playing out when he he was commanded to leave Sayyidina Hajj and Sayyidina Ismail there and when he was commanded to slaughter his son Ismail right the same disposition and so he says ya Ismailu inna Allah amarani bi amr Ismail Allah has commanded me a particular command qala fasna fasna ma amaraka rabbuk you know, do what your Lord has commanded you to do. You know, this was the the Ismailian disposition. You know, it's not do ya Allah ya Rabbi ya 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 Abati. Oh Father, do what you have been commanded to do. If al ma tu'mar, satajiduni insha Allahu sabira. This was in the case of the slaughter. Do do what you have seen. Do what you've been commanded. You will find me patient. And so, before even knowing what Ibrahim was asking, Sayyiduna Ibrahim was asking of Sayyiduna Ismail, Sayyiduna Ismail tells him, do what Allah has commanded you to do. And brothers and sisters, I want that to be the spirit that we embody as parents with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that when we convey this tradition and the beauty of this religion, the sanctity of the Quran and Sunnah and the commandments of this religion to our children, they embody that disposition of sami'na wa ata'na, we hear and we obey. You know, we are so keen as parents of having our children obey us. And we, it, it drives us insane when they don't listen to what we ask them to do. No matter how virtuous or not, but we, we, we have an expectation as parents that our children listen to us. And that disposition of Sayyiduna Ismail, where he where he listened to his father and he obeyed him the way he did was because of the disposition of his father Sayyiduna Ibrahim and the disposition of his mother Sayyida Hajar who they themselves were in a state of loving surrender to the will and to the commands and to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so when we tell our children hey children you know this Ramadan hey son my son my daughter my beloved I want you to be like Sayyiduna Ismail what the children <laughs> What the child perhaps should say, although you know we have to be muaddabin, is well, I need you to be like Sayyidina Ibrahim, and Mom, I need you to be like a Sayyida Hajar, because I want you know for my son, for our children to be the Ismail's of our age, we have to embody the spirit of Sayyidina Ibrahim and the Sayyida Hajar. So fasna ma amarak rabbuk, qala wa tu'inuni. He said, do what your Lord has commanded you to do. And so Ibrahim says, Sayyidina Ibrahim says, and you will help me. SubhanAllah. And the word here is tu'een, meaning that, are you going to be with me? Are you going to support me as I'm fulfilling this command? Qala wa Yes, I will help you, Father. Of course. Qala fa'inna Allah amarani an abniya hahuna bayta. That Allah has commanded me to build here a home. Wa ashara ila... He indicated to this, uh, you know, raised portion around where, next to where they were. And so the Prophet says, that is where they, they too, the father and the son, raised the foundations of the house. يَأْتِي بِالْحِجَارَةِ وَإِبْرَاهِيمُ يَبْنِي And it was Sayyiduna Ismail who would go and he would gather the bricks and he would give them to his father, Sayyiduna Ibrahim, and Sayyiduna Ibrahim would place the bricks and he was the builder. حَتَّى إِذَا ارْتَفَعَ الْبِنَاءُ جَاءَ بِهَذَا الْحَجَرِ Until the, the structure was raised, Sayyiduna Ibrahim brought the rock. And the rock here is in reference to Al-Hajar Al-Aswad. And Al-Hajar Al-Aswad, my dear brothers and sisters, the black stone, it came down from heaven white. It came down from heaven white. And what made it dark or blackened it were the sins of the ibad, the sinfulness of creation. This is what made the black stone black. And so subhanAllah, we have a reverence for the black stone, but in its essence, the black stone is white, meaning to indicate that it came from heaven in that disposition, that orientation. 
And this is not a commentary. People's minds may go towards the space of you know white being pure, black being impure, and then that being a racial reality. This is not in that discourse at all. But it is to indicate that you know the bla the the blackened nature of the stone came out of sinfulness, and that is very much in 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 the discourse of the Quran and Sunnah. And so we have to be mindful of our sinful disposition and how that creates impure realities in our spaces. Something so sacred was made impure by our actions. And this is where, when we're thinking about the home, and we're thinking about constructing a space, you see that number one, it was done collectively. That everyone had a role to play in the space of the construction of the home. Right? It wasn't a it wasn't a singular effort. You know, so often today we find people, you know, they, they will build masajid and they'll build spaces, they'll build their own homes, and they're only interested, you know, in their accolades. They're only interested in their position as an as an as a you know as the, the, the head of the household, Rabbul Bayt, you know, <laughs> that, that I am the king of the home, or I am the king of this institution. You know, and we have that disposition, unfortunately, that, that permeates so many of our spaces. And this was not the case here. This was a collective reality that was being done in submission and surrender. And the indication here of the black stone that was placed was so that it is an ishara, it is a reminder. Every time we go around the sacred house of the Kaaba, we look at the black stone and we remember us and we remember one unfortunate quality about our reality and that is we cause a lot of harm you know it's one thing to really want to have a nice masjid in your home or to have a nice masjid in your community it's it, you know we have these nice intentions but what is the waqa what is the reality of my conduct and my action how are my actions bringing about that reality and establishing an Abrahamic home, uh, Abrahamic space? Or is it that my behavior, my ego, my arrogance, my, my, my belligerent nature, my filthy tongue, my backbiting, my aggression, my abuse, it's souring and polluting and darkening the realities. May Allah protect us. And so, they place the black stone. And they they write in fact they place حتى إذا ارتفع البناء جاء بهذا الحجر فوضعه له فقام عليه وهو يبني وإسماعيل يناوله الحجارة وهما يقولان you know this was the final this was the final thing that was going to be placed and so Sayyidina Ismail is you know handing off the the stone to Sayyidina Ibrahim. And the two of them were saying what? رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ O oh Allah, my Rabb, accept from us. Verily, you are the all-hearing, the all-knowing. And perhaps, brothers and sisters, that is, you know, the spirit of how we begin this Ramadan. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا O oh Allah, accept from us. You know, we have to come with our very simple efforts. In the case of Sayyiduna Ibrahim, it was him and his son putting brick after brick after brick. And then what do they say? رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ minna. Oh Allah, accept from us. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ You know, I don't want any of us to write ourselves off this Ramadan. I want us to try very hard to build brick by brick our masjid in our home. We're going to place one brick after another. One ayah of the Qur'an. One page of the Quran, one raka'ah, two raka'at, three raka'at, four raka'at, five raka'at, six raka'at. And I want you to imagine every single time you stand to pray an obligatory prayer, every single time you stand to make you know your taraweeh, your qiyamul layl, whether it is two, four, six, eight, up until twenty. I want you to imagine every single time you raise your hands. In that, in that spirit of dua, I want you to imagine that a brick is being laid down. And the masjid, the, the, the home, 
you know, your home away from home because our homes is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's where the spirits live, right? And this is our home, this a dwelling that we, this is our home away from home. And so in our home away from home, we're going to build a masjid that is going to be the space of qabul, of acceptance, because we want acceptance. We want Allah to accept us, to accept our children, to accept our families. And so we're, we're, we're going to be mindful of the sinfulness. We're going to be careful about what we're watching and what we're saying this Ramadan in our homes. We're going to be careful about the actions and the behaviors. Brothers and sisters, I can't be belligerent and abusive to my wife. I can't be nasty towards her and harmful towards my children and then get up and pray my salah at night and then repeat the next day yelling and screaming and being belligerent and nasty and assume that somehow something sacred is being built. That type of hypocrisy and dual personality is not something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever accepts. So we don't want to be hypocrites, you know. We want something beautiful. So yes, the next time I imagine myself or see myself becoming enraged, becoming belligerent or nasty, becoming dismissive or aggressive to my parent or my child, to my spouse, I think, what am I doing here? Am I blackening the pure that was sent from heaven? Or am I building a sacred space? where I can find a genuine refuge because the house of Allah that is built and the, the, the sacred houses that are built upon taqwa, upon God consciousness is where nourishment will, will, will happen and, and increase and illumination and that's what we want our homes to be. We want them to be a space of second, you know, we want them to be a place of tranquility and that's why it's called a maskan. You know, a place of tranquility. That's what we, we, we so desire. And so, that is the spirit. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ And so you see that throughout the, 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 the process of these verses in Surah Al-Baqarah, the entire orientation was number one, a spirit of surrender. And we have to come into this month with the spirit of surrender that I'm here to not eat and drink and not have intimate relations with my, with my spouse. I'm here to read Qur'an and pray my prayers and make dua in the spirit of loving surrender because Allah has been with us beyond generous, beyond kind. He has showered us with His grace and His mercy and His, and His love. He has showered us endlessly with that reality. And so you see that in the embodiment of, of Sayyidina Ibrahim, was a, what he embodied was that spirit of, Oh Allah, you command me, I hear and I obey. And he, he would do it lovingly. You know, he would do it with a spirit of, of, of desiring to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and, and I know that that is, is not so often the disposition that we have when it comes to worship. But that's why I want this to be an Abrahamic Ramadan. Because if we want to make a serious shift in our lives, then that's how I'm going to have to start treating my prayer, treating my fast, treating my, my recitation of the Qur'an. You know, listen, building the masjid, of building the Kaaba was physical labor. It was hard work. They had to carry brick by brick, brick by brick. It was physically laborious. So it's not to say that this is not hard work, because certainly if we want to build homes that are upon this masjidi quality of Sayyiduna Ibrahim, then we're going to have to put in the work. You know, we can't just wish these things into reality. The, the, the beauty of our tradition is that it follows a simple logic. And the simple logic is you put in the requisite work, you, you, you make sure you take in, you know, you, you put the right measures in, and inshallah the outcome will be what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I want us to commit ourselves right now to serious work. You know, I don't want us to go into this month having hopes and dreams, but not 
putting in the hours to have that realized. And the spirit of Sayyiduna Ibrahim in building this reality was that he was concerned. You know, he was concerned for he was he 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 was concerned for the generations to come. And so he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you know allow this space that is being constructed to be a refuge for generations and generations to come. وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ and, and bring, Ya Allah, a messenger from them, the generations to come. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ That will recite these verses and this guidance and they will teach them the book and will purify them. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Because that was the concern. The concern was the off, what was going to come. You know, that's why Sayyidina Ibrahim wanted a child in the first place. He wanted a child so that he could pass off the legacy to his son, to his daughter, to the child. And so when he was building, he was building with a multi-generational aspiration. It wasn't selfish. It was being done in loving surrender. It was being done for the sake of his offspring and his children. And it was being done for the sake of the umam to come. And he made a dua for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at that moment. And so Allah tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَاتَّخِذْ مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى And take the maqam. And the maqam of Ibrahim is where he would stand to raise the Kaaba. Take it as a place of salah. Because of that Abrahamic spirit. And so when I'm building today, brothers and sisters, when I'm building brick by brick through my salah, and through my Qur'an, and through my dua, and through my fast, and through my wudu, and through my good words that I share with my children, through my adhkar in the morning and the evening, through my, 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 my pleasant disposition, my jovial disposition, I'm not going to be angry, I'm not going to be stressed out, I'm not going to be annoyed. Of course, we're all, we all experience those emotions, don't get me wrong, but I'm not going to allow it to spill forth and to darken my space. That as I'm building brick by brick, I'm thinking about the hearts and the souls of those around me. My, 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 my spouse, my children, my parents, my cousins, my siblings, my neighbors, my community, and my ummah. I'm thinking about what is the spirit that I am exuding in my space. Because we, we, we don't realize the power of the ruh, the power of the spirit to permeate realities around us and how it impacts how it impacts people around us if we just maintain the right spirit no matter how many times we make and we're going to all make mistakes and we're going to fall short and maybe we're not going to pray as much as we had hoped but I'm going to put in effort I'm going to try and I'm going to sometimes I'm going to stand up and sometimes I'm going to stumble but the spirit is what the spirit is of loving surrender and it is a care because the Prophet Sallallahu was, was rahmatan lil alameen. He was sent as a mercy to all the worlds. And so I want to be a conduit of mercy. And that's why Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala tells, you know, Sayyidina Ibrahim and Sayyidina Ismail, "An tahira baytiya lil ta'ifina wal 'akifina wal ruk'i sujood That when you're building this space, you have to make it pure and clean. So a, a big part of us ensuring that the masjid of our home, the Abrahamic masjid of our homes, our individual home away from homes, is built is that it's pure. And that's why istighfar and tawbah are so essential before we enter into this month. As we're at the doorsteps, we're saying, Ya Rabb, Allahumma ghfir li wa tub alayya. Because I know we're all coming with a lot of stuff as we're about, as we're about to enter into Ramadan. And so we want tahara, we want purification, we want, you know, and subhanAllah, I would recommend that we, we make a pure we make a, a fit we make a, a, a ritual purification in the form of taking a ghusl almost in the spirit of saying, Ya Allah, I want to cleanse, I want to wash. Before you pray your first tarawih, meaning before you pray your first Aisha and Tarawih, take a ghusl. Just take a nice you know ritual bath. And then and, 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 and embody a disposition of istighfar 
of seeking forgiveness and purification, embody that disposition. So that it's, you know, you've, you've, you've leveled and you've cleaned the area and then you're putting your first brick and you just watch over 30 days how the masjid is built. And then you see the lights turn on, why? Because it's becoming amir. How is it becoming amir? Because every single night you're standing on your musalla. And you can just next, inshallah, as every night you sit on your prayer mat, and every night you sit in your small little masjid area, which we've said everyone should have a small area, whether it's in their bedroom, on the prayer mat, or in, a, in their home if they have bigger spaces, where every single night, and every single morning, and every single salah, you're finding yourself in the masjid. And you're watching as your footsteps go from place to place, and you're standing. How many minutes, hours, inshallah, Dozens of hours, if not hundreds, are being spent in these next 30 days on our masjid as we're bringing the life to it. Because it's masjid, la masjidun usisa ala taqwa. These are masajid that inshallah will be built upon God consciousness. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Sayyiduna Ibrahim in Surah Al Hajj, wa adhim fi nasi. بالحج يأتوك رجالا وعلى كل ضامر يأتين من كل فج عميق ليشهدوا منافع لهم ويذكر اسم الله في أيام معلومات. And so Sayyidina Ibrahim was commanded by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and call people towards this space. You know, call people towards this space so that they would witness ليشهدوا منافع لهم ويذكر اسم الله في أيام معلومات. And so that was the command, you know, stand and call people. And of course, Sayyidina Ibrahim is standing there, and there's no one around him. There's no one there. And so look at the discourse that happens between Allah and Sayyidina Ibrahim. Sayyidina Ibrahim says, Oh Allah, you want me to call people towards this house, but I don't have... The ability, I don't have, you know, وَكَيْفَ أُبَلِّغْ النَّاسِ وَصَوْتِي لَا يَنْفُذُهُمْ And how can I call the people? And my, my, my voice will not reach them. You know, I, I'm here, I'm by myself. You know, whether he went on, you know, Jabal Abi Qubais or whether he went on Safa or Marwa, wherever, the, you know, he was, he's like, I'm going to stand here, but no one's going to hear me. No one's going to listen. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Nadi wa alayna al You call, and it is our duty to convey. And this, brothers and sisters, is the spirit that I want us to take to our entire religious discourse and disposition. You know, when we're thinking about so many of our loved ones, who we want them to be closer to Allah, we want them to be closer to to Sayyiduna Ibrahim and Sayyiduna Muhammad. We want this spirit to be a spirit that, that you know, pervades our spaces. And some of us, I know, are thinking, well, I'm going to have a masjid and I'm going to put it up, but I know my son, I know my daughter. They're in a stage in their life. They're going to be stubborn. They're going to say, you know, forget, just you pray, mom, I'm going to do it by myself. Some of us, you know, as, as, as husbands and wives, we're going to find our, in ourselves heavy when we're, you know, we're calling one another. And sometimes we're going to be, you know, lazy or we're just going to want to do our own thing. And, and this, may, this may, you know, harm our spirit or devastate us at times. But I want you to embrace this Abrahamic spirit when you're calling your loved ones to Allah and His Messenger Muhammad وسلم, I want you to say, Ya Allah, I've called. And you said to Ibrahim, that you will convey the message. So I've, I've, I've done my part. وَمَا عَلَيْكَ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغِ And that's the beauty, that's the liberating beauty you know, of the Abrahamic spirit that was ultimately you know, trickled down to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu which is وَمَا عَلَيْكَ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغِ All we have to do is convey. So we're trying our best, each and every single one of us are going to build our, 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 you know, our foundations, we're going to lay the bricks, we're going to purify the space, 
We're going to bring all of the right intentionality. We're going to do it in a state of loving surrender. We're going to do it with generational concerns in our hearts and minds. And then we're going to call. And we're going to welcome our own family. And maybe our family will respond to the call. And maybe they won't. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do what? To guide our hearts. And to guide our children's hearts. And to guide our spouses' hearts. And to guide our parents' hearts. I know a lot of us are worried about our parents and worried about our children and worried about loved ones who are off, who are not interested, who are completely disconnected, who are not even perhaps Muslim. And I know that this is something that weighs heavily. And some, some may be listening right now, some who are Muslim and some who are not. But the duty that is upon the shoulders of those who follow in the footsteps of Sayyidina Ibrahim, وَأَذِّمْ فِي النَّاسِ Call the people. And what was the response of the people? For generations and generations, billions upon billions of Muslims, لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك Oh Allah, at your service, at your service, at your beck and call, we, we respond to you, لا شريك لك And there are no partners with you. We come to you in, in pure individual states. And I, and, I, and I know, brothers and sisters, how much the communal quality of Ramadan has come to animate the way we think about Ramadan. But this is why this Ramadan is so unique. It is because we can embody an Abrahamic disposition where he was building, no one is around. He's praying, and the only one who's there is his son. He's calling to Allah, no one is around but his son. He is calling people and no one is present. Imagine, he's standing on the mountain and he's calling people towards ibadah and there's no physical presence of any human being. That's why if we come to terms with the fact that this ibadah is an intimate reality, it's between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that the communal quality is certainly beautiful and something that we want and we aspire to have and cultivate and build. But at the end of the day, it's between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even if I'm in the communal space and I'm praying, it's only me and Allah. Yes, I have brothers and sisters around me, but it's about me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when Allah has removed people from my physical presence, does the salah stop? For Sayyidina Ibrahim, certainly did not. Everything had to be built. You know, we are so often, you know, in the, the psychology of the modern person is very utilitarian. You know, it's about the necessity of seeing numbers, impact, you know, and, and, and like what, what the data spread shows and, 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 and how convincing and how influential and all this kind of stuff. But the Abrahamic spirit is a virtue for the sake of of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that I build for Allah, that I call for Allah, that I bow for Allah, that I supplicate for Allah, regardless of who's around. And that's, I think, a very powerful spirit that inshallah ta'ala, we can channel into our homes, into our hearts in this month. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ibrahim, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ آمِنًا وَجْلُبْنِي وَبَنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ Oh Allah, make this land safe and, 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 and preserve me and my offspring from ever committing shirk, from ever committing idolatry. رَبِّ إِنَّهُنَّ أَضْلَلْنَ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ Oh Allah, these idols have led many people astray. This is how he was talking to Allah. This is where his concerns, and from the verses that we recite in Surah Al-Baqarah, to the verses in Surah Al-Hajj, to the verses in Surah Al-Ibrahim, to the verses that you find in Surah Al-Anbiya, and many other chapters where you see the story of Ibrahim, you'll see the spirit that he's maintaining. He's concerned. He's worried. Ya Allah, these, these, these idols, they have led many people astray. And we have our modern idols. We have our modern you know, uh, idol worship. The things that we are obsessed with. Whether it's pop culture, or all sorts of social issues or political concerns that have become a modern form of idol worship. And we're sitting here so often worried, worried about the status quo, worried about the salvation of our own being and then our children and our family members. 
Sayyidina Ibrahim and Ba'i. So he called upon Allah. فَمَنْ تَبِعَانِي فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَإِنَّكَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ So Sayyidina Ibrahim says, Oh Allah, anyone who follows me, then they are with me. As for anyone who disobeys me, you are surely forgiving and merciful. That is the Abrahamic spirit. You know, Ya Allah, please, anyone who's with me, yeah, they are with me. And anyone who disobeys me or is not following this way, you are the most forgiving, the most merciful. رَبَّنَا إِنِّي أَسْكَنْتُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ بِوَادٍ غَيْرِ ذِي زَرْعٍ عِنْدَ بَيْتِكَ الْمُحَرَّمِ رَبَّنَا لِيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ فَاجْعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِنَ النَّاسِ تَهْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ وَارْزُقْهُمْ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْكُرُونَ Oh Allah, I have established some of my offspring in an uncultivated valley close to your sacred house, O oh Allah, so that they may keep up prayer. Brothers and sisters, the reason why we have a home, the reason why we have anything, is to keep prayer intact. لِيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ أَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ Establish your prayer, brothers and sisters. We spoke so extensively last Saturday about the, the sacred quality of prayer in our lives. Sayyidina Ibrahim is saying to Allah, Ya Allah, I, all of this that you commanded me to do and that I fulfilled, the intention is that salah is established. We want our homes to become places of salah. Prophet ﷺ says, don't allow your homes to be maqabir graves. Bring the masjidiyyah alive. How do we bring the masjidiyya alive? We establish salah. And Sayyidina Ibrahim says, make people's hearts turn to them and provide them with produce so that they may be thankful. You know, it's a vertical reality so that salah is established and we attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ya Allah, grant them from the goodness of this life and let them be protected and cared for and give them the sustenance that is they need that they need so that they are thankful. Shakirin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us in this sacred month amongst, amongst the Shakirin. As we're sitting there, subhanAllah, and we're praying our prayers. And then simultaneously we're sitting at our tables and we're taking our iftar, whether it's our dates, or we're having a, a sip of water, or we're having some rice, or some, 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 some vegetables, or some lentils, whatever we're having, we're having it with the spirit of shukr. You know, it's, I, I want you to transition always in the Abrahamic orientation. Ya Allah, I'm establishing prayer, I'm building the masjid. Ya Allah, I sit down to eat. Ashkuruka, I thank you, Ya Allah. And you vacillate in that, in that Abrahamic spirit. رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ تَعْلَمْ I want you to listen to what Sayyidina Ibrahim is about to say. رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ تَعْلَمْ مَا نُخْفِي وَمَا نُعْلِنْ وَمَا يَخْفَى عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ Oh Allah, you know well what we conceal and what we reveal. Basically saying, Ya Allah, you know my reality. You know who I am. You know what is to be seen and you know what is not seen. You know everything, Ya Allah. وَمَا يَخْفَى عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ And certainly nothing at all is hidden from Allah in earth or in heaven. أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي وَهَبَ لِي عَلَى الْكِبَرِ إِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ إِنَّ رَبِّي لَسَمِيعُ الدُّعَاءِ Brothers and sisters, I want when we're standing in front of Allah as we're entering into this month to say, Ya Allah, you know who I am. You know what I'm about. You know what I hope for. You know what I want for myself, what I want for my spouse, what I want for my children. You know what I want for my parents. You know what I want for my, my, my community. You know what, 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 what is and you know what is not. And I need your help, Ya Allah. I need your help and support. And so he's praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted him. Wahaba, you know, gifted him realities. He's gifted him the sons, Ismail and Ishaq. I want us to, if for those of us who have children, I want us to look at our children and say, Alhamdulillah, that you gifted me these children, but these children are not just meant to be little cute dolls in our homes. These children are to be carriers of a prophetic reality, of a prophetic responsibility, one that we have to strive, inshallah, to carry in our own lives in terms of how we pray and how we serve and how we give and how we are present for others. And we want our children to carry that, that reality as well, that mas'uliyah, that amana, that trust. Oh Allah, you are the one who hears the dua. 
And so Ramadan becomes what? It becomes the month of dua. رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِي Oh Allah, make me amongst those who establish my prayer and amongst my offspring. Sayyiduna Ibrahim, who built the masjid, who is given all of these divine inspirations and guidance and he's fulfilling them, but he's turning to Allah in a state of humility and supplication. رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِي Ya Allah, make me and my children amongst those who establish prayer. رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَاءَ Oh Allah, accept my dua. So dua is ibadah. Dua, 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 we have to have an intimate discourse with Allah this Ramadan. A part of building the Abrahamic masjid in our homes is, 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 is having a prolific conversational relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one unique quality that you'll see so much in the story of Sayyiduna Ibrahim is that so many of the ayat are dua. So many of them are supplication. رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيَّ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الْحِسَابِ Oh Allah, forgive me and my parents and all of the believers on the day of reckoning. That was his concern. It was a spiritual reality that he had concerned himself with. And that is precisely ta'ala, the reality, brothers and sisters, that I hope you and I can concern ourselves with. And, 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 and without a doubt, when the verses of Ramadan are followed by the, 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 this beautiful gift of an ayah, Allahi, if we take the time to really consider what this verse means, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ And if your servants, and, and, and if, if, if my servants ask you about me, then verily I am close. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ I respond to the caller if he or she calls. I want us to feel the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah is never far. Allah is always the closest thing to us. Allah is closest, closer to us than we are to ourselves. And he responds to us, and he hears us, and he knows what we what we hide inside. He knows our worries. He knows the things that our our spouses will never know. I know all of us. Our spouses know much about us, but they don't know everything about us. Whether it's a husband <laughs> with 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 his wife or a wife with her husband, there's always those things that only Allah knows. And the same with our children, same with our parents. So we, we have our relationship with Allah, and He knows, and so, Ya Allah, You know. And the fact that, Ya Allah, You've put me in this place of quarantine and isolation, I want to embrace an Abrahamic reality in my life. And I want to treat You in the manner that Sayyidina Ibrahim treated You. I want to have a relationship with You the way that Sayyidina Ibrahim had a relationship with You. That despite the presence of people, regardless of whether people were there or not, that the worship was rich because it was about that intimacy between myself and the one who's closest to me and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي Let them respond to me. وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي And let them believe in me. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So that perhaps they will find success. And that's what it is, brothers and sisters. Let us respond to the call of Allah. Let us respond to the call of Allah that came that comes to us through who? Through Sayyidina Ibrahim wa Adhim Finnas. So we're saying right now, as Ramadan is coming in, Labbaik. Ya Allah, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. We're here. We're here at the doorsteps of Ramadan. We're ready to go. The millions and millions of Muslims in this country and the and the one point seven billion Muslims across the world, Ya Allah, we're here. And we want this to be a very special Ramadan. We want to build our homes in a way that become beacons of light. Because you know so often, subhanAllah, when we're in our masjid space, what do we say? Ya Allah, make the masjid a beacon of light. Right? But perhaps for our masajid to become true beacons of light, this home has to become a beacon of light. This home has to become a beacon of light. And as the light is turned on within me and then turned on in my home and then we collectively as individuals and families 
inshallah soon by the permission of Allah will congregate in the house of Allah then the house of Allah you know becomes a beacon of light but that requires that we start here and, and don't forget don't don't forget one thing the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam revelation came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after a space after a time of isolation it was many many months if not three years that he spent in the cave of Hira before revelation came before that momentous occasion happened and inshallah this Ramadan this Ramadan becomes our cave of Hira as we are embodying the Abrahamic spirit of building and building and working because you know the cave of Hira was a place where the Prophet ﷺ worshipped in a way that we don't understand and know but it was a time for him to contemplate and think and reflect. Sayyidina Ibrahim, I like the imagery of him building the Kaaba because I know that we have to work hard. But when we combine both realities, of course the Prophet ﷺ, you know, he embodied that essence of work and hard work and putting in the effort. But that, that spirit of the Khalwa, if we can embody it, that the Prophet ﷺ embodied and then revelation came. Then be even Allah Taala. Perhaps that's a reality for us that can transpire this Ramadan. And and let's not let's not belittle the opportunity here, because the opportunity with Ramadan is very real. The opportunity is one where Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala makes it that every single night, starting the first night of Ramadan, meaning that if 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 let's say tomorrow is the first day of Ramadan, then tonight would be the first night of Ramadan. Right? That starting on the first night, there are those who are saved from Jahannam. That you can be, you can attain your spiritual goal in life on the first night of Ramadan. That the, that the shayateen are shackled. So you get to really get to know who you are because the shaytan is not around to entice you. So it's me and me, you know, <laughs> me and Allah, the shaitan. I can't, I can't blame things on the shaitan. That heaven is open and Jahannam is closed. And that heaven beautifies itself for the sacred, you know, Jannah is already beautiful, but it beautifies itself even extra for Ramadan. And you know why it beautifies itself? Because Jannah itself, heaven itself says, Ya Allah, designate for me in this month from your righteous servants. Jannah makes dua, you know. Heaven actually supplicates to Allah and says, designate for me from your servants, your righteous servants, those who will dwell here. Don't we want to be on the receiving end of the dua, the acceptance of the dua of heaven? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that. May we be amongst those who are granted salvation in this month. And may we be amongst those who are who we are receive the dua of, of Jannah. This is the month, brothers and sisters, where Man Sama Ramadan Imanan Wahtisaban Rufiralahu Matakadama Mindambi that those who fast and another narration those who pray. Man Sama wa man qama. Ramadan, this month, Imanan Wahtisaban. And these are the two fundamental conditions that we have to embody this month. It is the spirit of Iman that I'm doing what I'm doing because Allah has asked me to do it. Allah loves when we do what He asks us to do. And I do it in a spirit of Ihtisab. And the spirit of Ihtisab is one that has high hopes. And one that is awaiting the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ahtasibu in the Allah. That I am I have hopes and I'm awaiting the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is that also an indication of my good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That I have a great opinion that Allah will give me, and Allah will have mercy on me, and Allah will forgive me, 
and Allah will purify me and purify my home and, and rectify the condition of my, 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 my family and my community and Allah will, 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 make me, will help me love Islam more and help me to love prayer more and help me and help me and give me and give me that I have ihtisab because the, 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 the converse reality is what? Is I do it with half-heartedly, you know? That's not to say, you know, I, and I, I want to emphasize this. It's not to say that you, you, we don't have to do exactly what we do with the imam in the masjid. You know, that, that level and that length and that style of prayer or worship. No, do what you can do. And I've said this multiple times now over the past week and a half. Do what you can do. But do it with a big heart, you know, full of iman and full of hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't write yourself off. Wallahi, don't write yourself off. Don't look, don't, don't, don't belittle yourself. Don't, 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 don't deprecate, in, don't self-deprecate in a way that is destructive. It's good to critique. Yes, it is good to challenge myself and to push myself and to say I can do better. You know, if I only pray two today, I can pray for tomorrow. And if I only pray 10 today, I can pray 20 tomorrow. Whatever you are in your, in your, in your journey. You prayed, you, prayed with, you, prayed, you read half a page of Qur'an today, I'm going to read a, a page of Qur'an tomorrow. You read five juz today, I'm going to read 10 juz tomorrow. Wherever you are. But you do it with a spirit of belief and surrender lovingly to Allah. And you do it with a great opinion of Allah with hope. That Allah is bountiful and He is so giving. Because when we go to Allah in that spirit, Allah showers us far more than we can fathom. So brothers and sisters, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this a truly blessed Ramadan for us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that as this month is coming upon us, that, you know, we, we, that, that He surrenders us to Ramadan and He surrenders Ramadan to us. And yusallimna li Ramadan wa yusallim Ramadan lana as Prophet would say. And that we ask that this this new Hilal, this, this new crescent of Ramadan, it comes upon us, you know, this new moon of Ramadan, that it comes upon us as we are in a state of Amn and Iman. Amn meaning safety and security and Iman being rich belief. Wassalama wal Islam, Salama meaning peace and Islam meaning being in loving surrender. You know, and then the Prophet ﷺ would point at the new moon, he would say what? Rabbi wa rabbuk Allah. My Rabb and your Rabb are Allah. And so we turn to the Rabb of, we turn to the Rabb of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We turn to the Rabb of the new moon. We turn to the Rabb of Sayyiduna Ibrahim. We turn to the Rabb of all creation. And we say, Ya Allah, we ask you to allow us to enter into this month in the best of states, with the best of spirits the best of high hopes and the best orientation of commitment to doing hard work and to doing real work and to follow in the footsteps of Sayyidina Ibrahim as we lay the bricks and we purify our space and we do it in that spirit of, of, of seeking your rida and your acceptance. Ya Allah, we ask you to beautify us with the beauty of the Qur'an. Ya Allah, we ask you to be the people of the Qur'an as we know that the shahr of Ramadan, the month of Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an. We ask you to bring life to us through the Qur'an. We ask you to bring us life through dua, through supplicating and calling upon you. Ya Allah, we ask you to bring life to us through dhikr. We ask you to bring life to us through salah and through siyam. We ask you to bring life to us through our sadaqah and our charity because we know that this is a month of giving and that you and the Prophet ﷺ would give abundantly in this month. Ya Allah, we ask you to help us to give abundantly from everything that we have, from our energy, from our time, from our material resources, from our physical abilities, from our hearts, from our spirits, from our emotions, from our psychologies. Ya Allah, help us to give and to be a people who love to give in your way. To give you, Ya Allah, what you love to, to be given to you and to give to the creation what you love for us to give to this creation. Barakallah li wa lakum, inshaAllah. If I can take a few questions if people have them. But truly, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow this to be a Ramadan where we can embody these spirits. Please go back, you know, read these ayat from Surah Al-Baqarah and from Surah Ibrahim and from Surah Hajj 
and and read these Abrahamic adriya and listen to how you know really listen with your soul how he spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and and listen to how he communicated to Allah and 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 then embody that Muhammadan reality you know as he went to the cave and he was seeking he was seeking fahada were you not seeking O Muhammad and we guided you so we sit in our homes right now in that spirit of surrender and that spirit of seeking with a commitment to do some serious work brothers and sisters is it going to be easy no it's not going to be easy but it's going to be rich nourishing meaningful work you know they say this is an honest man's living you know someone who who works hard you know the Prophet ﷺ saw a man who had hands that were coarse and he said, هَذِهِ أَيْدِي يُحِبُّهَ اللَّهِ These are hands that Allah loves. So we're, we're going to be people who are not afraid of some hard work and we're all going to have to come out of our comfort zones. Whether our comfort zone is laziness or our comfort zone is just, you know, we're not in the mood or our comfort zone is that we just perhaps have given up a little bit. That we're all going to kind of push ourselves a little bit more, a little bit extra. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna become Sayyiduna Ibrahim in our homes and Sayyiduna Ismail. And we're gonna have that spirit of Sayyidah Hajar that although she was by herself and she was worried about her son, as she was running back and forth and running back and forth. You know, carrying that burden all alone by herself. SubhanAllah, a lot of you who may be living listening are single mothers. Channel the spirit of Sayyidah Hajar. She was a single mother, you know, practically speaking, by herself to care for her son. And so as you're thinking about their child care and you're thinking about taking care of them, you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking about all this stuff, you're thinking about money. Safa Marwa. Just Safa Marwa it all day. You know, and you're walking from room to room. Regardless, you're walking from room to room. Imagine Safa Marwa, Safa Marwa. From your bedroom to the kitchen to the living room to the bathroom. Safa Marwa. It doesn't matter. You hear a child screaming and you run to them. Safa Marwa. Because Sayyidina Ismail was crying as she was running between Safa and Marwa. So we're, we're going to embody this entire Abrahamic family spirit. Because it's a beautiful spirit. And you see, there was a challenge to it. But challenge is good. You know, don't run away from challenge. Wallahi, don't. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Bi-ibnillahi ta'ala. So I hope and pray that these ma'ani, inshallah, are, are of use, practical benefit to all of us. Um, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and yubalighna Ramadan. O Allah, grant us Ramadan and allow us to be uh, amongst your servants this Ramadan. And we ask you, Ya Allah, to gather us together as friends and family very soon. We ask you, Ya Allah, to bless us with, with a Eid gift, <laughs> you know, of being with our loved ones physically. Although we're going to be together spiritually, we'll be together on Zoom, and we'll, we'll make dua for each other, and we'll have different types of gatherings and all sorts of, you know, streams and webinars and stuff like that. But may we be together, inshallah, so that we can embrace each other. And that the light that we've all kind of worked on cultivating within ourselves in our caves, that becomes a light that is palpable, present, and there for the generations and the generations to come. Because our community and this world, it needs the Muhammadan Abrahamic light that is, is so beautifully imbued in loving surrender we we need it and everything and out around us need it so let's let's take this as our time in hira to be in our caves so that inshallah at the end revelation happens and we exit and we start to move with that prophetic spirit barakallahu fikum wa jazakumullah khair i don't see that oh actually i've been i i didn't notice that there were questions <laughs> please forgive me um i mean i mean where can we learn about Sayyidina Ibrahim? You can learn about Sayyidina Ibrahim and Sayyidina Ismail in the Qur'an and you can learn about it in uh, books of stories of the Prophets of Ibn Kathir and others. Any books on the stories? Ameen, Ameen. Barakallahu feekum ajma'een. Um, Barakallahu feekum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Ameen. May Allah give us strength. Allahumma Ameen and perseverance. Ameen, Ameen, Ya Rab. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you feathers. A number of loved ones and community members who are, who are not well um, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them shifa. One of our very dear sisters here, Sister Zainab in, in Boston, 
um, she is uh, not well and she is under, um, um, you know, due to the coronavirus. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant her shifa and tam and la yugadiru saqama. And I know many of us have family members or know f people or loved ones who, who are sick and ill with all sorts of ailments and diseases and those who may have passed. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have, give shifa to all those who are ill and to grant them purity and to grant them beauty in this moment of illness and increase and to have mercy upon our loved ones who have passed. Barakallahu feekum. Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Kareem. You know, this is, this is truly a, a blessed and enjoyous moment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a blessed one for us all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.